Hey folks, welcome to ADSR. I'm Stephen Ellistad. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media. So the Machine 2.6 update brings a whole bunch of cool new features, including MIDI CC control for external hardware, the variation engine, and lock mode. And in this video, I wanted to talk about lock mode, snapshots, and snapshot morphing. So lock is a great tool for creative experimentation, improvisation, and performance. It's been available on the Jam controller for a while, but with the Machine 2.6 update, we're able to use this functionality on the Machine Studio and Machine MK2 controllers. Unfortunately, it's not quite ready for the microcontroller, but I have to assume that it's coming soon. The basic concept of lock mode is really simple. Take a snapshot of your current settings, then tweak your sounds or groups, including levels, filters, panning, effects controls, or what have you, pretty much any modulatable parameter. Once you've made some changes, you can simply either update the current snapshot or create a new one, and up to 64 snapshots are available. So we can use these for different mixes or say, setting up for a solo or a breakdown to dramatically adjust levels or panning. And once we've taken the snapshot, we can always recall it by selecting it on the extended lock screen. The snapshots are independent of scenes or patterns. It's a snapshot of the settings of the system at a given point in time. So it doesn't matter what patterns you have selected or which scene you're actually active in. This gives a nice extra dimension to play with when you're structuring and developing your tracks. How to do it is really quite simple. We can access it from a number of screens. From the channel window, we can access it from the plugin window. And we can see right here, just to take a snapshot, this is a tune Mandel Ice from the Pulsework machine expansion. Here's how the scene sounds right now. And so if I like that, I can just hit lock. And that's now locked. Now if I hit shift extended lock, this takes me to a screen with a bank of up to 64, so four different banks of snapshots. Now I've got that in there, and if I wanted to make a change, say, come to my mix, and bring some of these levels down in the... Make some changes like that. Now I can come back to my extended lock and update it. And once we've done that, it's a good idea to save. I'm not sure if it's still a requirement, but previous versions of the lock function required that you save your project to lock in updates. So now I've got that, and if I want to create a new snapshot, we go there, and now we can go back to our mix. Maybe bring some of these back. And just come back to our lock, external lock, and update it. And then again, I'm going to save just to be safe. So now, and so this works with any modulatable parameter. So we can change anything, go to a group and apply, say, a filter. So we'll come over here and shift browse, add a filter. And find a spot that works. Now I can come back to my exterior lock, create a new one, and update, and I'll save again. Now if I want to bypass it on this version, shift, bypass, exterior lock, and update. So here we have our snapshot with our original lowered kick drum and some of the drum parts. Here we have it without the filter and with the filter. And this will work with panning, what have you. We can come over to our mix 
and say, grab any particular elements. We can adjust levels. We can adjust our panning. If I come back over here, shift, external lock, and update, shift all. And maybe we want to say add some modulation to our particular plugin. So we'll come over here. Maybe I'll add, say, a beat delay. Solo that out. Now if I hit play. We'll notice that because I haven't previously adjusted that on an earlier snapshot, I might need to come over here and bypass it for a number of different scenes. But once I've updated that, it's off on all these scenes, but it's active here. So yeah, anything modulatable, we can pretty much adjust. And we can do this with levels, we can do this with automation, we could do this with plugin bypass, we can do this with pretty much anything. And if we want to transition between them, we have our morph function. And we have two different modes. We have travel mode and target mode. And so travel mode means that it will transition from one snapshot to the other from a minimum of a half bar all the way up to 16 bars for a nice gradual transition. Here I've got it one bar. I'm going to hit play and I'm going to transition over to that one. So we get some nice subtle transitions between different modes if we choose that option. If we choose the target mode instead, this is a little quicker. And we can either move from an eighth note, which is pretty darn quick, to one bar. And so here now we can hear it. And so just like that, morphing allows us to switch between these, gives us all kinds of improvisation and performance opportunities. And we can use lock mode to check everything from mix levels to come up with different types of ways to present parts of our song. And we can tape snapshots maybe per scene, uh, per pattern, or just to experiment with particular sections of levels or automation or what have you. So there's a lot of fun stuff that we can do here. I'm Steven Ellenstead for ADSR. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Take care.